Good morning. Try that again. Good, am I on? Yeah, I am on. Okay, cool. How are you? Good. Isn't God good? You know, I just, uh, I don't know, I, I sense this the first service, but I also sense it now just from the Lord that God is just blessed by our praise and our worship. Wasn't worship good today? I just sense that God just wants to enjoy us. He just wants to enjoy us and coming to Him and then just, just that interaction, that close interaction. So Jorge, who do you have? Do you have Sophia or do you have Abigail? Abigail. And you're going to have to teach each one of us on who is who. <laughs> you still don't know. <laughs> what do you do? Like write their name on their hand or something? Or? Ah, okay. Well, what happens after that's removed? <laughs> So if you don't know, George and Melanie had uh, identical twins, and, and they just got out of the hospital last week, correct? And, they, and last week, in fact, we prayed. You remember this? We prayed together um, because Sophia was, was still struggling some with eating and breathing at the same time. Um, Abigail was doing, was doing better, uh, more consistent. And we prayed that they would get home and come home together, and that's what happened. And that happened last Wednesday. Last, yay! We were just talking about the girls and just how God met. So you have Abigail, Sophia. <laughs> that's going to probably happen the rest of my life. No, who are you again? Look for the painted. Nail, right? <laughs> oh, God, you are so good. Thank you so much that both Abigail and Sophia were able to come home together. And Father, we pray that you will bless God the household, the Benitez household, with sleep. Because I, <laughs> I know they need it. <laughs> and, but God, you would just multiply their time when they lay down. And, uh, and God, you just encourage them all, um, all five of them. God, thank you that you are an awesome and mighty and loving God. And we can cry out to you, and you hear us, and you answer us. Thank you for answering us. And God, we can pray together corporately, and we just thank you so much that, God, that those prayers don't go on deaf ears. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I, uh, I want to share a funny story. Um, my son, both of my two youngest sons, that's Caleb and Nate, are in wrestling right now. And, uh, and they've really enjoyed it. And uh, I heard a, yeah, back there. Um, someone else is a wrestler back there. But, you know, it's... They, they've really, they've really en enjoyed it. I've, I'm just so proud of them because they've, they've, they've gone forward with a lot of confidence. And when I was younger, it was intimidating. This is like three minutes of sheer like energy releasing time. I don't know what you want to call it. I mean, it is intense. Um, I say three minutes, but it's probably a little bit more than that. But um, there's three periods, and I think they're a minute and 20 seconds a piece, something like that. But um, they're just doing so well with it, and um, it's their first year doing it. But I just had to share this uh, statement that Nate made that just made, made both Amy and I just laugh because he said, you know, I just love wrestling. I don't like track as much. I just love wrestling because you get to beat up people and you don't get in trouble. <laughs> I was like, and then he goes on to tell me, I want to do this, you know, this is like a three, three season, three week season, maybe four weeks. It's really short. And he's like, I want to do it again. I want to do it, but not just next year. I want to do it before next year. So he really likes beating people up, I guess. <laughs> Don't we all? No. Well, you know, I, uh, there's a statement that Steve Sampson made last week that uh, 
I just keep thinking about, and I, he prayed it over somebody, and it was, he prayed it over, I don't remember who it was, maybe somebody here remembers, or maybe you're the person, but he said to someone, he said that you, God has given you snake boots, and, uh, and did, did anybody get that here? Okay, no one, Jose did, that's right. Um, I just have been thinking a lot about that, and I've heard him pray that before over certain people. And what does that mean? It just sounds kind of weird. Put your snake boots on, you know? Um, well, snake boots are probably really expensive to buy, first of all. Um, but, but the significance of it is um, snake boots are on your feet, and you're, you, you step into them, but you're actually stepping on the snake, and the snake represents the enemy. And... And God told us that, we, that the enemy is under our feet. And we are to walk with confidence knowing that we have authority over the enemy. And I just feel like the Lord just keeps saying that to me personally. But I think he's really, I believe he's saying that to our church. Is we need to put snake boots on and put the enemy under our feet. And, and walk in the authority that God has given us. And when the enemy comes and he lies at us and he deceives us because he does and he will, that we don't have to put up with it. We don't have to ponder what he tells us to ponder. What he whispers is something that doesn't, doesn't it isn't something that, that is truth. What God says is truth. What the enemy says is a lie. And we just need to put the enemy where he belongs. And that's under our feet, but there, you know, there is no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. But every tongue that rises against us, we shall condemn, is what the Word of God says. It's not because of us, because later on in that verse, it says it's because of the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ is what allows us to stand against the enemy. We can feel pretty powerless in our human flesh. And the truth is, you are and I am in our flesh. But in the spirit, talking about spiritual breakthrough in the nation of Nigeria, they need to know that they have authority over the enemy through Christ. Our nation, us, Living Water Church, needs to know we have authority over the enemy. And to stand in that and walk in that and put your snake boots on. So I just, I just keep sensing that from the Lord. Um, okay, well, I want to start today um, to give a few of us an opportunity to share. So I'm going to grab this mic again. And what I'm going to do, see, last week, most of you know this, but not every one of you knows this. But we had Steve Sampson and Melody Sampson here, and they ministered prophetically over many of us, corporately, of course, but many of us individually. And I love that, I, just as I have noticed from all the different means that probably most of us were spoken over in some way or another, in a personal level. In fact, can you do this for me just so I get a feel? If you were ministered to just personally, he called you out, he prayed for you, he said, hey, you've got to if you've got headaches or whatever, and he prayed over you about that, whatever it may be, just lift your hands up because I just want to see how many people were touched just in a personal way from that that he just prayed for you. So many of us, not every one of us, but many of us. You know, this is how I believe God, God speaks. He wants to speak personally to us. Let me tell you this. God is in a relentless pursuit of a personal relationship with you with every one of you, a relentless pursuit to know you personally, every one of you, because you are that important to him. You are not an accident. You know, Steve said that. We're not accidents. God made us. And he made us for a purpose. And he wants to speak to us. And I'm going to go more into this, but the prophetic word brings hope. It's meant to encourage. And so some of you, I think, I know many of you, just as I've talked with you, 
have been really encouraged by what the word of God, what the word of God from Steve, how it came to you and what was spoken over you. And so I just want to give an opportunity for a few of you to come up front. If something happened, if you were just changed by that word, um, and maybe you still don't understand it all, and that's okay. Because sometimes we just don't, we don't see it all. We don't, we definitely don't see it all. Sometimes, most of the time, probably almost all of the time. Okay, all the time. <laughs> uh, but don't come running up here too fast, okay? Because I can just feel the overwhelming pressure of everybody running up here right now. Ah! Oh. So there was like uh, about three of us that stood up that said we couldn't sleep too good? No, there was about 30 of us. <laughs> but I've been taking Benadryl for about nine months to go to sleep, and mm -hmm. I still wake up. Mm -hmm. And it was like the day after... Um, he prayed over all of us. Yeah. I stopped taking Benadryl, and I woke up like 11 o'clock. I was like, ah. <laughs> I did it again the next night, and I woke up two minutes before the alarm, <laughs> which was awesome. It hasn't happened for nine months. Wow. Praise <laughs> and God. And that's been going on for four, four days now. Awesome. And no more Benadryl. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Okay, you got to run. No. Um, he talked about, Steve talked about, well, one thing he said that I just love is, if Jesus has all power, then how much does that leave for Satan? I just, for some reason, I just keep hmm. thinking That's about good. that in my mind. Anyway, I don't know. This happened to me at work, and I was, he, he also talked about choosing choosing life and not choosing death and yeah. in every area of our life and our thoughts especially Amen. and so Tuesday morning I had a contracts meeting which is really boring and I wasn't really I really didn't want to be there I had a whole bunch of stuff to do and I didn't want to be at the meeting anyway but so they're talking about this thing and I actually had what I thought was a really good idea and so I kind of raised my hand and I said hey what if we try this and like not my boss but the boss above my boss looks at me and says, you know, if you just reviewed this thing the way you're supposed to review it, then you wouldn't have to worry about that, so, and kind of just shot me down right away. And so I'm thinking to myself, wow, I guess maybe I don't even like working here, you know? I mean, because you know how your mind starts going off, and I'm thinking, you know, I thought it was a really good idea, and she didn't like it at all, and so I'm not even sure why I even come up with ideas. I'm just going to sit there in these meetings, I'm never going to say anything. And I started thinking, like I said, I really don't even like this job. I don't even know why I'm here. Maybe I'll just go find another job. I, and, you know, I'm starting to go down this road, and I thought to myself, you know, you need to choose life here. That's good. So I decided that, you know, it doesn't matter. If I think I have a good idea, I'm going to share that idea. And if they don't like the idea, that's okay. That doesn't mean I'm saying what I think I should say. What I feel is I think God's given me my brain, so I'm assuming it's from him. And... I thought it was a really good idea, but anyway, I thought, okay, so fine. I'll just, you know, I used to work with this guy named Steve, and he just blurred out all this stuff, and it was right or wrong. Never mattered to him if everybody made fun of him or not. And I thought, I'll just be like Steve. I don't care anymore. And so the meeting's over. We're all getting ready to leave, and she says to me, Alan, come over. I need to talk to you. <laughs> like, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, so then you're really going down the dark path. <laughs> thinking, great, I'm going to get, they're going to tell me never to say anything. And she said to me, you know, as soon as I shot you down on that idea, I started thinking about it, and I thought, that is a really good idea. I need to talk to Alan about that. Anyway, so she got the whole, like, team together, and we sat around and talked about it for, like, 15 minutes. So they're actually going to make that part of the policy now. <laughs> Praise God. It was yeah. just like, so anyway, it was just just amazing turnaround. And, you know, I, I get back to my desk, and there was a message from Brenda that said, hey, how'd your meeting go? And I was like, uh, this, it was absolutely incredible. You will not believe what God just did. I, I, anyway, I, I, my mind went to, okay, if you wouldn't have obeyed and you wouldn't have done what you were supposed to do, then what would have happened? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's just, uh, and it was like I said, I didn't have to go talk to him, but didn't have to do anything. It was just in my mind making a decision to choose life. That's good. Very good. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Very good. Someone's got to come on down, running down. 
Here he comes. Can't run very fast, though. <laughs> well, first of all, that's a miracle answered, so it's awesome. Uh, actually, I'm going to speak about uh, Jose, which is my a coworker who received that word. Um, so when I first started, I started preaching to him. You know, I just started telling him all this stuff and about Jesus, and he just sit there, uh-huh. And so then I was like, oh, he's not receiving. Well, I'm not going to preach to him anymore. So a year later went by, and this other guy named Jose came to work. And me and him started talking with this other Jose <laughs> oh, just there. And so as we were talking about Jesus, um, Jose goes, you know, I had never heard of about Jesus or anybody speak about Jesus the way that George did when I f he first started. He's like, wow. man, it was amazing, like all the stuff he was saying. So I was like, he was listening. <laughs> so, so then I'm like, you are made for greatness. God, I just started going after it. Like, you are not an accident. There is a purpose for your life. And just started, you know, just really getting after it. <laughs> and so then I, when I heard Steve Sampson was coming, I was like every single day, hey, to all the guys, hey, 10 more days. Hey, nine more days. Eight more days. And this Jose was like, I don't have a ride. I'll pick you up. And, you know. <laughs> and so when he, when he finally got here, um, Steve Sampson spoke over his life and he said, you were called to be a fisher of men. And, mm -hmm. you know, and he was telling of the, the snake boots and the authority and all that. Mm -hmm. So on the way home, it was amazing that I was like, so what do you think? And he was like, man, I'm so glad I came. He's like, do you remember that one time when we worked and you were like, God has a plan and a purpose for your life that I'm not an accident. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, well, today I just found out that purpose. Wow. And so, That's praise awesome. the Lord. That's great. Yes. Good. Mm. Awesome. Isn't that encouraging? God, God uses the words that we share with people. He does. There is power in his word. It will not return void, right? It will accomplish what he pleases. That's what's happening, Jose. Amen? God is good. God is good. Well, since there's so many people running up here, I'm just going to go ahead and sit back down. And... All right. Well, you know, I want to talk to you um, particularly um, about a, two different things. I feel like the Lord is, uh, first of all, he's, he's talking to us as a body. I really believe it. And I just want to kind of reflect a little bit upon what Steve Sampson has talked to us about from an individual level and from a corporate level. Uh, let, me, let me start with the corporate level. Uh, from a corporate level, do you remember Steve Sampson saying to us as a church um, about the building? And he said, the building is what? Coming, Coming soon. A lot of people heard that. And you know, a few years back, he said that, we ha that God has a building in his hands for us. And so we've been looking for a building. We've been just trusting God and looking for that opportunity and trying to uh, uh, turn uh, rocks over and check things out. We, in fact, looked at a building about a week ago. Um, these are things that we're just wanting to move forward and see what God will provide. But God says it's coming soon. I believe that. I'm trusting in that. But you know, there's a reason why we've been looking for a building. And why would we look for a building? We're looking for a building that's bigger. If a building's going to be bigger, it's why does God want us to have a bigger building? Because he wants us to impact more people. He wants us to impact more people with Christ, with the message of truth, with people like Jose. People need to know that there is a purpose and a plan for their life, and they are destined for greatness, like you said. God, God wants us to know that there is much more out there than what we can ever imagine or believe or even think exceedingly abundantly. Amen? And so God, God's been talking to me about this um, just from the standpoint of, from a, a corporate level, we, God, God wants us to, to, to look at that, that vision, so to speak. Let me share a verse with you.
Not that one. This is in the Amplified Version. It's Proverbs 29, 18. It says, Where there is no vision or no revelation of God and His Word, the people are unrestrained. But happy and blessed is he who keeps the law of God. Now, I share this because, first of all, this, uh, when you talk about unrestraint, um, it's, it, it may be a bit confusing. Um, at least what it was to me when I first read you know, this verse many years ago. Another version says it this way, without a vision, the people perish. The people literally just wilt. And they become, they lose motivation. And they are more susceptible to temptation as a result. And so you lose restraint. When there's no vision and no revelation, there's, your restraint against the enemy is weakened. You begin to perish. You just begin to fall under the pressure. God gives us prophetic words individually and corporately to strengthen us, to build us up, to give us a hope for the future, to, to, to speak into our lives that we will hold on so we can stand against the enemy and stand against his temptation. In Ephesians 6.10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the scheming of the devil. We must be strong in the Lord and in his power, his might, not ours. And when he gives revelation and vision, we're able to stand strong in his purposes and his plans. And I believe that that's what God is saying to us as a church on a corporate level is to stand strong together. Let me share this. Many of you have signed up for um, DVDs or audio CDs of the words that were given. And the words that were given, probably most of us, and this is true for me too, I wanted to ask for where I received a word. You know, I said, okay, I want to have it on Sunday night because that's where I got my word. And I encourage that strongly. Write down the word that God gave you so that you can stand upon that and you can pray over that and you can feed upon that. And some of it, again, you might want to put up on the shelf for a while because you're not quite sure what it is, but still keep praying about it because it's, it's a revelation that God has given you so that you won't lose restraint or perish. But I want to encourage you to do something else but from a corporate level. Get other CDs, get other DVDs and write down those of others that you know and be praying over that. Be praying over other people's words because it, it'll encourage them. Then you'll know. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was up here, I was feverishly writing down everything I possibly could for the people because I tell you, when I write it down for someone's prophetic word, it digs deeper down into me. It gets into my head. I start praying for those things. I start praying for, for those, those words of encouragement over those people's lives the new chapters that God has for us. I remember that came over, over Mark. Um, I say Mark, that was Mark Coop. You know, new chapters in his life. Old ones are torn out. New ones are being done. New ones are being created. And so there was good words over other people that we can stand upon. This is what I'm talking about as far as a, a corporate level uh, revelation. I just encourage you with that. I encourage you from individual, but also corporately. You know, I want to talk to you on, on an individual level for a minute. God keeps giving me this verse, um, backing up here, in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where it says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Or come to me, those who are heavy burdened, I will give you rest. Now, this scripture does not say a few things. And I want you to look at what it does not say. 
It does not say, come to church and you'll get rid of your burdens and you'll find rest. Now, later on in another verse in, in other areas, it says, come to church. And that's valuable. But Jesus says, come to me. He doesn't say, come to church. He doesn't say, come to a Bible study. He doesn't say, come to your wife. He doesn't say, come to even just reading this thing as a book from front to back and then setting it down. He says, Jesus says, come to me. Come to me. Come and know me. Come and come to that, as Steve Sampson said last week, come to me to that secret place. I love the way he talked about that. From, from Psalm 91.1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide or live under the shadow of of the Almighty. You want to live under his shadow and live under his protection? Then come to the secret place. Come and, and know him. Come and be with him. You know, we need that. For, to be strong in the Lord, we got to come and be to the secret place. I encourage you, come to the secret place. You know, I love how Steve said too, is like, from a corporate level, again, I'm jumping kind of back between the individual and corporate, but from a corporate level, he, he would come to God and say, God, who do you want me to pray for? Before I pray for me, who do you want me to pray for? And he would listen. You know, that's hard to do. I don't know how many of us do that. I mean, there's times when, when we probably all do that, but at the same time, we pray about ourselves more than anything, don't we? And concerns... He wrote a book. Steve Sampson wrote a book, and this one's just rocking me, and um, I love its title. It says, I was always on my mind. Isn't that about the way it is for most of us, if not all of us? I was always on my mind. You know, God is wanting to dethrone us, and he's wanting to enthrone God in our, in our lives so that we can have his kingdom, not ours. The secondary title of this is, are we building his kingdom or are we building ours? God wants us to build his kingdom. And that's hearing from him and what he wants. And it's not about just the things of, of our lives. I was always on my mind. I love that. Come to me, God says. You know, it, uh, if you're anything like me, um, you kind of you got to ask the practical question: How do you do that? How do you come to Jesus? You know, when I f first became a Christian, I was back in 1987. It was uh, the summer between my senior year of high school. I just graduated and going into college. And I had no clue what it meant to come to Jesus. I had no clue at all. Um, I was told that I need to memorize verses and need to read the Bible. And I was like, okay, I can, I can try to do that. You know, I'm a pretty good student. I can do those types of things. Um, but I had no clue what that meant. And, uh, and it probably took me about almost a year and a half to two years to figure out what it meant to come to Jesus. Um, excuse me. I went to a, a conference in Estes Park at uh, the YMCA camp that's up there. The, I can't remember what it's called, but it doesn't matter. But we were, I went up there with, with a group from Camp Shade for Christ, and they were talking about going to have your first quiet time or have a quiet time with God. And I was like, what in the world is that? And... Uh, and, and they talked about what it meant and, and that you just come and you, you read the scripture, you read a little bit of it, you, but you talk to God beforehand. And you say, God, just would you make this real to me? Because I want it to be more than just information. Um, I, I want to really meet with you and, and talk with you and hear from you. And, uh, and so it, they, they really talked about just, just asking God to, to make it a a one-on-one -on -one interaction with God. And it, it was really revolutionary to me. I didn't really, I hadn't, hadn't heard of that before. Um, and so at the end of this talk, 
we're out in Essis Park, and they sent us outside the, the chapel, and they said, you know, just go somewhere, but go by yourself. Don't go with anyone else. Go find a place just on your own and just talk to God. And this was my first quiet time. This was in the fall of 1988, a year, nearly a year and a half after I had um, came and gave my life to God and, uh, and accepted Christ into my life. And it, it kind of, it's interesting because I remember reading the Psalms and I remember specifically reading Psalm 37, um, verse 3 and 4, where it says, um, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I just started praying over that verse and just saying, God, I, I want to delight myself in you. I don't know what that necessarily means, but I do want the desires of my heart. <laughs> um, but teach me how to de delight myself in you. And you know, so it's just kind of these baby steps of just praying through a little bit of what the scripture actually says. That's what a quiet time really is. Just read a little bit of the scripture and then... Pray over it. Ask God to make it real to you. And he does. And it's like the Holy Spirit. You know, I love the way Steve Sampson just says, oh, sweet Holy Spirit. He's such a sweet Holy Spirit. And he is. He's kind. He's good to us. He cares about us. And he wants to make himself real to us. And... Uh, you know, maybe some of you are a little bit like I was back in that time and when I was years old, that you had no, you've never had a quiet time before. You've never spent time with God before. Or maybe it's been for you, it's been maybe a long time. Maybe it's been a month or, or a year or so since you've had a time with God alone and you just really took that time. I would just encourage you, God wants to meet with you every day. You know, that, that scripture that Steve shared last week is one that's really been on my heart a lot too. And where, where some came to Jesus and said, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? Cast out demons in your name. And the Lord responded. And when he responded, he said, depart from me. I never knew you. God wants to know us. And that, that scripture, I think, rocks my world still today, um, because I, I think about it, it's like God knows, doesn't he know us? He made us. He knows everything about me. Um, but the scripture doesn't say that, that, that we, it specifically says that I never knew you. Well, that's strange because God, he knows all about us. But it's more of an intimate knowing. It's not a knowing about. Like Steve Sampson said last week when he pretended like he was Brad Pitt and, you know, and, and uh, went up to Brad Pitt or Bob Newhart if you were in the first service because um, he kind of looks like Bob Newhart and said, oh, hey, Bob. But Bob Newhart said, I don't know you. You know, I don't want God to do that to me. I don't know you, Ken. I don't know you, so depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. I don't want any one of us to hear that. I want us to know God. To know him intimately in that secret place. But it's at that point when, when we're in that secret place that God can speak to us and speak to us prophetically and speak to us with revelation. Speak right to our heart. You know, you know, God's spoken to my heart so many different times with just this one scripture here and then this one scripture there. And those are benchmarks in my life that really changed the course of my life. I could name a hundred of them to you, but they're just little things. And those little things is what has, has changed me because now I know God in a deeper way. And as a result, I'm able to stand as that first verse I shared with you. I can stand against the temptations of the devil and not give in and be unrestrained. 
I can stand and I can, I can start to put the enemy under my feet. Not just because the, the Lord s- said to do it, but because I know that God wants me to stand in authority and he's given me that authority. God wants us to know the authority that he's given us and to know him because he's the ultimate authority of it all. And so we have such amazing power against the enemy. Like Christian said, um, I think it was, no, maybe it was somebody else. My brain is not always working real great up here. But um, as, someone, as someone was saying, um, now I lost it all. It's okay. God loves me anyway, right? He's kind. But it's, uh, the Lord is just good. So let me, let me share just a, a little bit more and then um, just on this one example from a individual and a corporate level. Tim, Pastor Tim actually um, runs our video equipment, our camera, our video camera. Our video camera and plus uh, several on his team too. And the video camera um, was actually purchased um, with, with some consultation from Chris Johnson, who knows technology really well. And so they bought a really high-quality, high-resolution camera. And, and so much so that um, it, it has incredible clarity from there to up front here. And it's about probably 40 feet is my guess on that. And uh, incredible clarity. But because of that clarity, it poses another problem. And that problem, Amy and I have laughed a lot about because the problem that comes is that when you watch that video and you pan in or you zoom in on someone like me, you can see every single pimple and zit that I have upon my face. <laughs> and it is embarrassing. And so needless to say, we've told the team, just back out a little bit, will you? <laughs> we don't want quite that much clarity. Um, and you know, I think that It's like I was just thinking about this because I think it's a real good analogy of what the law of God does for us. See, the law of God exposes things. The camera exposes my imperfections on my face or the stain upon my shirt or whatever. It shows those things from an exterior standpoint. But you know, the Word of God, the law of God, exposes our imperfections, not just on the outside, but on the inside. And it almost so so much so, you're like, okay, let's just back that off a little bit, like the camera. But you know, um, a lot of people in our world today look, and even those that go to church, Look for the law of God to cleanse them. And the law of God is a little bit like a mirror as well as a camera. And you can go up to a mirror, and if you get really close to the mirror, you can see some things that you don't really want to (laughs) see on your face, like those pimples and zits that I was talking about. And see, a mirror exposes things, and the law of God exposes, exposes things, but you'd never take a mirror and take that and try to clean your face with it, would you? It wouldn't work. So you've got another product. And that other product, whatever it may be, can help cleanse and, and, and clean, clean the surface of your body. But you know, from, a, from the standpoint and a spiritual standpoint, the law of God can never clean us. It only exposes our imperfections. And what we need is we need more than the law of God. The law of God, we can, we can try to do better, to do more and more of what the law of God says, and we'll never get clean. We'll never get clean. But what cleanses us is Jesus. Putting our trust in Jesus. It's so to, Jesus is, so to speak, the the cleanser 
that you could use on your face or maybe even the Photoshop program on a, on a video camera. See, too bad that that camera doesn't have Photoshop <laughs> and it could erase some of those things. But you know, we have the privilege of knowing Jesus Christ and His goodness in our lives. His grace in our lives that covers our imperfections. And those imperfections is like, or the, the, the grace of Almighty God is, is like Photoshop of the soul. And it can cleanse us and make us whole. Where God doesn't look at us and He's mad at us anymore, or He's not mad at us, but He's pleased with us because He sees Christ in us. He sees the righteousness of Christ. The law can never make you right. Your relationship with Jesus and giving your life to him is what makes you right. That's what makes you right. And, and the corporate part of this piece that I want to share and just in closing is I believe that God is calling us forth as a church. He's calling us forth to, to be more used of him. God wants us to be set on him. See, John Wesley shared a, a, uh, a quote that just rocks my world. And he says, you know, the church has nothing to do but to save souls. Therefore, spend and be spent at this process. I was saved. My soul has been saved. I know many of you, your souls have been saved by the blood of the Lamb. And now God wants to use us to share that. And not, not that he hasn't already, but in a greater manifestation of his presence and, his, and through his spirit. He wants spiritual breakthrough in this church so that we can reach more out. God is saying that coming soon, a building's coming soon. Why? So we can have greater effect on those around us. So that we can speak the gospel in, in more ways and more people and and, and have more effect for his kingdom and not just for our kingdom. And so I believe God is calling us to that. You know, I'm going to talk to you about this probably some more next week in relationship to praying about it, praying from a corporate level, fasting in a corporate level, um, and so that we are taking seriously what God wants us to do as a body. Because it's about his kingdom and it's not about us. It's about him and not about us. Amen? I'd like the worship team to come on up. Will you stand with me? You know, as we, as we sing this song together, as we worship the Lord together, I would just ask you that just come to God in a personal way. Come to Him as Jesus bids you to. Says, come to me if you're weary and heavy laden. Let Him give you rest. But also, would you cry out to God and ask Him what He, what, what revelation from a personal standpoint that He wants to highlight so that you're, you're sent out, literally sent out in a way that God can, can do amazing things beyond what you have ever asked for or believed Him for. Just between you and God, just cry out to God corporately. Let's worship Him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His Lord.